Welcome back to today's episode of Navigating Cancer. I'm Dr. Joey Bennett. Wendy Hall is with me. And again, today we have a special guest, Todd Sandlin of Pet CT Services of Florida. Uh, Todd is the nuclear medicine technologist at the Pet Center in Beverly Hills, located right back behind the bowling alley. Again, I think many of you have probably seen Todd or met Todd through your family members. Uh, in the last segment, we were talking about getting ready to have a PET scan. And I've come in, I'm at your office. No, I am. Oh, you're at his office. That's right. <laughs> Wendy's at your office, and Wendy's blood sugar has come back at 105, which is That's a right. good level. So what's next? Okay. Uh, she's in a comfortable recliner. She's sitting back there. I've taken her history from her. We've checked her sugar. Uh, we try to make sure it's, uh, it doesn't have to be in the normal range, but it has to be under 300, which would be very high. If it were to be too high, that would be like pouring water in a glass that's already full. It, the body's just already saturated with glucose, and we can't do our test. So we would have to reschedule. But if you're not way high, then we'll do the test, and we want to make sure of that first. I've checked your sugar. Next thing I do is I set an IV in your arm so that I have access, because what we're going to do next is inject our dose. And what I'll inject you with is a radioactive glucose. Glucose is used normally by all the cells in the body to reproduce every day. And that's a normal basis. The carbohydrates turn into glucose and replenish the cells all the time. So as this is they, like a shot that you're Yeah, you yeah. Well, it okay. doesn't go a shot into you. I set the IV first so that we make sure we have a patent good okay. vein. And then we inject the dose into that IV. Okay? okay, so that goes into your circulatory system. Glucose metabolizes throughout the cells in your body. What we're looking for is malignant cells. They replicate and they use glucose at a much faster rate. So after I've injected the radioactive glucose, malignant cells will really pull that glucose in at a faster rate. But when they do that, they show us where they're at because the cells not only pull in the glucose, but they also pull in the radioactivity that's tagged to the glucose, and that's what shows up on a PET scan. So the bottom line you can remember from all that is that a PET scan is not just taking a picture. A PET scan shows us physiology and function mm -hmm. at a molecular level, and that's what's great about a PET scan. And on your screen right now, you're looking at a, a PET scan. You're kind of looking at a view of somebody straight from the front. Um, and Steve, if we can kind of go back and forth on this, um, at the very top, what you're seeing is the brain. And you had heard Todd earlier saying that the brain burns a lot of sugar. We all know that if you drown or lose oxygen, the brain is one of the first things to actually die, and that's because it's sugar deprived. The other thing that you see that's kind of U-shaped in the center, that's the heart. Um, and the heart burns up a lot of sugar because it's beating 70, 80 times a minute. So a lot of sugar that's metabolized there. And then down at the very bottom of the screen, this is the bladder. Um, and so when you see this scan and you're looking at these three different areas on your screen right now, the brain, the heart, and the bladder are normal. Sometimes you can see the kidneys lighting up as well, but on this one you don't necessarily see that. So these are the normal things. And Todd's brought some really nice pictures to show us of what some other scans look like. This is a normal scan. Bill, if we can go to the next one. Um, this is a patient who has lung cancer. Um, and Steve, we don't have to cut back and forth on this one because I think everybody can see the big green arrow. Yes. Um, you can see in this patient in the top part of their right lung, they've got a very hot, bright spot there. And tell us kind of what we see here. Well, that is a, a lung tumor, and that is a rather large lung tumor. That's probably two and a half centimeters, or maybe three centimeters across. So larger than a golf ball. About like yeah. a golf, yeah, a little bit larger. Now, on a regular CT, uh, a tumor this large in the lung would be seen on a CT. It would be seen as a mass. But the great thing about a PET scan is that it can see a tumor much smaller than that. Right. Whereas on a CT, you may not see it. The radiologist may look at a CT and say, that looks like a normal lung and not catch it. But on a PET scan, it would show bright and say, look right here. This, these cells are trying to grow too fast, and this would indicate cancer. And when they so does this always mean it's cancer if they see something like that? It's not necessarily always cancer. I mean, it could be infections sometimes that can show up like that, but <clears throat> that really is pretty classic one. And another nice thing that you see on this or you don't see on this, in the center part of the chest, you don't see any little bright spots in the very center, which means that there doesn't appear to be any lymph node right. involvement on this one. This is an earlier stage lung cancer. So this patient would have a very good chance of being treated and cured of their lung cancer with surgery. Uh, what's our next one? 
This is the transaxial view of the same one. The first uh, slide you just saw was a coronal view, which is from the front. This is a slice taken uh, horizontally across the body at the same tumor level, and that, that's just the same, the same patient, the same tumor, uh, but that's from, the, from a slice instead of from and the And Steve, front. if you can back out, you can see other things here. The lungs are on both sides here. This is the tumor. This thing that you see right in the center, that's actually the arch of the aorta. aorta. That's the major blood vessel <clears throat> coming off the heart and supplying the body. So uh, next slide, what do we have? This is a, uh, a slide of colon cancer, uh, the transverse colon uh, into the descending colon here in this area, right where the arrow is at. And that's uh, a lot of uptake showing there, and that, that's colon cancer. That's from the front view, just like on the first uh, And then if we go slide. to the next slide, we have this the... Is, this is the transaxial view. I call it the spiral sliced ham. That sounds yeah, exactly right. So. But this is where the colon comes across and starts to descend, and that's where the colon cancer and is. And this right is there. one of the things that we were talking about in the earlier segments. I've actually had people before with breast or other cancers that I've sent in for screening. Mm -hmm. The beauty of a PET scan is if you've got breast cancer and we're doing a PET scan, we don't just... PET scan the breast. It's a whole yeah. body PET scan, scan. PET scan is usually from the, at our office, it's from the top of the head to just above the knees. We, right. Some PET centers don't go to the top of the head, they go to midbrain. They call it eye to thigh. But at our office, we like to cover all of the, uh, the head. You have the dose in you, why not? Why not? Mm -hmm. And we have seen uh, incidences of melanoma on top of the scalp, which is a common place to get melanoma. And why have that dose in you if you're not going to scan the whole body? Go to the next slide and we'll see. Um, what? This is the distal esophageal cancer. This is cancer of the esophagus further down. You, most people think of the esophagus as up high. This is a little bit lower down. And, and you can go to the next slide. It just kind of gives us a cut across it. It sits right. right in front of the spinal column and back behind the heart in that location. So what's the next one we have? This is head and neck cancer. A lot of times this is related to a lymph, a lymph node cancer. And that is a head and neck cancer. You see it right at the top there. Yeah, right by the arrow is a lymph node in someone's neck. And on the next slice, um, the same, same thing on a transaxial slice. And it almost looks like they probably have a tonsil cancer uh, that has come out into a lymph node maybe here. So right. what's your next one? This is a, a, a great finding. This is melanoma. It's a very small melanoma on the person's back. This is the back of the patient. Uh, this is a transaxial view, and it'll be closer on the next slide. But that's on their back. But I hope you can see that when we bring it up to the full screen, that tiny little dot on the back and over here by the green arrow. I mean, this is an excellent example of why you want to scan the whole body because you may find things that you didn't even expect. And you can show us the next slide. Um, here's a really good picture of it down by the green arrow. That is literally a skin melanoma showing up beautifully. And if treated early scan. and found in a, a, prime, a, a single site like this, melanoma is very treatable. It's whenever they don't know about it. And they may have been here for lung cancer. They may have been here for any other reason, but we found the melanoma, and it will be removed, and they'll, they'll be through with that. Go to the next slide real quick, um, and even go to the next one, if you will, Bill. Keep going, because I want to cover one more thing. Um, keep going. Keep going. Here we go. Uh, PET scans are not just for cancer. They can also be used to help diagnose Alzheimer's yeah. disease. And what you're seeing here is a normal brain, and the red on there is the activity of sugar. And Bill, if you go to the next slide, you can see where the arrows are. There's not as much activity. So you can use PET scans for cancer and for Alzheimer's. Todd, I want to thank you for being thank here. You for His number will be at the bottom of the screen. We hope we see you next week.